what is working in our homeschool right now? What is our upcoming plans? Let's have an update and chat about it. If you're new here, I'm Nikki. I'm a homeschool mom to an only child in fourth grade. Recently, I put up a post on my YouTube and on my Instagram, kind of just like apologizing for my all over the place ness lately. <laughs> if that's not a word, I just made it up. Um, because I have felt like I'm all over the place. I come on here, we're doing this, we're doing that. It's constantly changing. I can't figure out life. We're in a rut. We're in a struggle bus. We have derailed many flipping times. And I'm going to flat out admit that when we derail, the second we derail, I am already like, in panic mode, my anxiety kicks in, my mama kicks in, my um, homeschool teacher kicks in. I'm like, oh, what are we gonna do? We're gonna lose time. We gotta find something that works. Hurry, hurry, hurry. And so quickly, I am jumping onto the web and I am looking for another curriculum. And that's basically my fault. Um, I also had a daughter who is ADHD and who fights back and she is not the first one to be overly excited about school. She is not the first one to want to complete um, assignments and there's a lot of times where she will skirt around it and she will skip things, especially on the days that I'm not here um, and try to get around doing the work. And then I'm second guessing. Am I giving her too much? Am I giving her too little? It's like constantly in my head. It's all I ever think about. It's all I ever research. It's all I ever talk about. It's all I ever do is I'm so focused on making sure that she has a good, well-rounded education. And it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And I am not taking it back for any reason. Like, I love this job. I love doing this. This is our lives. Like, this is what brings me joy. And it, it for sure is something that brings her joy when we're smooth sailing. But what happens is, is that something will happen with a curriculum and I'll think it's the curriculum or we'll have a conversation and she'll think it's the curriculum or um, something gets tough and she has a really hard time working through it. And maybe I don't see it as that at the time and then I come back later and realize, hmm, is it the curriculum or is it my child? And then I fluctuate back and forth with that. So I apologized. I am apologizing right now. I realized really quick that, not even really quick, I realized probably too late um, nothing's ever too late, but you get the gist. Um, I could have figured this out sooner if I would have just gotten my anxiety down. But what you guys see on camera here is just a fraction of my life. Like, so much heavy going on. There's a lot going on behind the scenes that nobody really knows about. And so, adding on this part of my life with homeschooling, it's a struggle. And it's a juggle. And constantly trying to make sure... We're just getting some stuff done. So I learned not to pivot so quick. I have to remind myself all the time. I don't need to change this. I don't need to freak out if we're going through a rut. We just have to keep going. Um, because what I learned is, is I changed all these things and they weren't working and I couldn't find something. And I'm like, what is going on? And what it turns out, we went back to our original stuff. And it started going fine. We go through phases. We go through ruts. I am the first one to tell you that. But when I'm in it, it's like I can't see the way out because I'm like tunnel visioned there. And so I freak out. I freak out. Um, and then I come on here and I probably seem like a crazy person. It's okay. You can say. So here we are. Let's, I want to talk to you about what we're doing, officially doing 
in our own school um, and go from there. So I'm still trying to find a balance. Will I ever? I don't know. We have routine, but we don't have balance, especially on the days that I am not here. She is not ready to be 100% independent and I'm okay with that. I just thought that's what she wanted because she made it very clear that she wanted to be more independent with things this year. And I thought she was ready. I really did. We were excited and everything was going well until it wasn't. And I also think that she really wants me to help her through some of these things and to do school together. Um, I think she realized really quick that it was more fun to do it together. And she misses that. She misses us. She misses the bond we were having. So I'm tweaking things. I'm going to see how they go. I'm trying to come up with a new schedule. Not so much routine or like time wise, but like just what days we're going to do what. So that I don't have worked out yet, but I have what we're doing. So we're sticking with the good and the beautiful math. Um, we are, I don't know, we're on lesson like 50 something. I don't know. We're not too far because we did take a decent break where we were doing um, learn math fast, which we're still doing. Um, that's going to be kind of like what I'm going to use as like a supplemental thing. But we are on level four where it is pretty much written to the student. It is very independent. It has a video along with a lesson for every lesson, mostly. There's maybe a couple here and there that doesn't have a video. Um, but for the most part, the child can read it and do it on their own. But my child struggles with math. So I want to make sure I do it with her so she's understanding the concepts. So she has a really hard time being corrected. And that has been our biggest battle. She doesn't want to hear that she made a mistake. And she's my little perfectionist over here. And I'm over here trying to have all the patience in the world to be understanding of that and try to find a way to connect with her in those moments. Because I would rather connect with her in the moment than create havoc, basically. Because it's just math. It's just math. <laughs> and honestly, there are some concepts that I don't even think she needs to learn. So that's a whole other different story. Um, but we're still staying with the good and the beautiful math. Now, we will add in this as a supplemental. And she will do this on the days that I'm not here. I do work a part-time job. So the days that I'm not here and I'm not able to sit with her and do math, she will dive into this book on her own. She does it. She does not skip through it. Um, I can see that she's understanding it. I mean, it's it's very black and white. It is very simple. And we're starting from like basics of the basics and practicing and narrowing in our facts. So we're still incorporating our learn math fast. And on the days that I'm here, we're going to do the good and beautiful math. So it might take us longer because she's only going to be doing like three lessons a week on it because we only school Monday through Thursday. It is what it is. I'm okay with that. Um, next up is we are sticking with our vocabulary. We're going to be doing this together. This is not going to be something that she does independently. I want to discuss it. I want to make sure she's understanding some of the things that they're having them do in these books, like the you know, web, webbing and breaking down words and stuff like that. I want to make sure she understands it, but we're only going to do that probably once a week, maybe twice at the most, but once a week is good enough for us right now. I'm not overly concerned with vocab. She is a very naturally good speller and also pretty much knows a lot of vocabulary because she's a good speller. She is very understanding, very good with reading comprehension. Um, next up is I have scratched the, so language arts is kind of our like <sighs> struggle bus still. Um, and not in the sense that we're struggling with language arts. We're not. 
It's just um, I have a hard time pulling her away because she really loves the good and the beautiful language arts. But there's two components that we're not doing. We're not doing spelling and we're not doing writing with them. Um, I, I need to do writing with her and if unless we started over in the writing book with the good and the beautiful, um, I would want to do it with her because I want to make sure she's fully grasping um, what they're saying in that book. But I, I don't want to do that. I we found another writing that we're gonna do together once a week, and I'm gonna do it very light because she is struggling, not because she doesn't know how to write. She writes stories but she's struggling with like the formality of writing. And I feel like I have a lot of time to work with her on that um, as far as age and grade level. So I'm gonna have her continue with The Good and the Beautiful. She's gonna get her grammar, she's gonna get her geography, she's gonna get her art. Um, and then she does love the readers that come with The Good and the Beautiful language arts. She prefers it. It doesn't take her long to do it, so we're sticking with it. But, like I said, we're doing a different writing. So we have come across My Father's World writing um, skills for today, and we are going to be working through this together. Like I said, once a week we are going to take our slow, slow time, and it literally, the way it starts out is a two-word sentence. Like, that is how slow it goes. So we're going to be sticking with that once a week. The other things that she likes, um, she has two handwriting books. I only have one in front of me, but she will do this riddle handwriting book, which is so much fun um, because they're riddles and it's a cursive book. So she's getting laughter along with cursive. And recently at co-op, I saw her and a friend writing their names in cursive on the whiteboard um, off to the side. And I thought that was the coolest thing to see because like she wrote so good. So very, very impressed and she really enjoys this. And then we also do Zaner Blozer handwriting as well, but she picks one that she does. She doesn't do both. And we go from there. Um, and we only do handwriting about once, maybe twice a week at the most. So the other things that we're doing um I still have I don't have a physical book because they don't it's all online but we're still kind of sort of doing history plus online I love it she really likes it it is engaging we aren't really retaining but it is engaging um I just think his history is not a subject we're going to retain um I don't know that's also one that I'm having a trouble scheduling um, because it's a day one, day two video of there's like a video for every day of the month and then the topic changes. So finding time to do it every day or incorporating it every day or if I should be doubling, um, I'm having a really hard time figuring out a balance with that, but we do still really like it. Now, I don't know. Do I want to keep paying for it every month for a subscription? I don't know. I don't know. I have, I don't have an answer for that yet. I want to still see how it goes and her thoughts, but she has so much fun. Like we laugh, like we truly enjoy the engaging videos that they offer. And so if I could just like freaking find a way to make it all fit in, like chef's kiss. We did start doing our own like novel unit. Um, when I say novel units, I mean, we're reading a book together and we're discussing it. Uh, I'll grab some vocabulary from the internet, maybe some comprehension questions, and we're doing it. She was very much more interested in doing our own books that we had on our shelves or from the library than doing like an actual formal curriculum for reading. So we just read um, The Courage of Sarah Noble this week. This is a very easy book and these are the books that I want because it's very big font. There was like 10 chapters. It had a couple pictures throughout 
and it was she really enjoyed it it was a good book so she read this all in one week we did like three chapters a day and she did some comprehension and that was it that was it maybe if I she we have a discussion and she can think of anything that we want to rabbit trail off of or further deep dive into on the internet we will do that um we will be reading my father's dragon next that's going to be our next book who have been around and seen my last couple videos you saw that we were supposed to be doing a pokemon unit um and it was all fine and dandy until it wasn't I really thought that that was going to be a thing and it ended up not. I did explain this in another video of mine. So if you missed that, go check it out. But it's kind of an all around kind of chit chat video as well. I'm just trying to explain myself, be real, stay real and all that jazz. But this is the plan for now. Um, it's working. It's, it is what it is. Like, we can't keep pivoting and we can't keep starting over. Um, I can and I have the ability to, but is it necessary? No, it's not. I just need to calm my anxiety down and realize that like it's just a moment. And some things she just can't be independent on yet and that's okay. Um, so that's it. That's all I got for you. Um, I hope that you guys have stuck around for this long and I'm really sorry again for confusing anyone or being all over the place. Um, I am going along this journey with you. I am just publicly sharing mine. Um, we all go through these moments and busy seasons and stuff like that. So that's all I got. I will see you in my next one. Bye.